Welcome to BTI TV, Business, Technology, and Innovation. My name is Aquila Joyner. I'm your host, and guess what? It's showtime. So I've been talking about supporting Black-owned businesses, and I put that question out to everyone to ask, how many Black-owned businesses do you actually know? So guess what? I'm here to try to help you solve that problem of knowing of Black-owned businesses. Tonight, we're going all the way to South Carolina to, calendar, one second. Starts in 30 minutes. Alexa, stop. Mm -hmm. We're going all the way tonight to South Carolina to amazing catering. So guess what? Like I said, it's showtime. Let's get started. I'm bringing in my guests right now. Hey, Chris, what's going on? What's going on? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Thank you so much. First and foremost, I just want to say thank you for, you know, inviting me to your platform and I appreciate it and I'm ready. So Chris, introduce yourself and introduce your business. Well, my name is Christopher Chef, Christopher Chin. I am the founder and co-owner of Amazing Catering here in Beaufort with me, well, along with me and my wife. Uh, we have built this from the ground up and we take we plan on taking it as far as we can. Okay. So tell me a little bit about yourself. I mean, what is it about cooking that dra grabs your attention? What made you get involved in this? Oh, all right. So where my very first job was at Hudson Seafood on Hilton Head, South Carolina, you know, very first job busting tables and one day, one of the cooks asked me, asked me to go get them something. I think it was something to drink or something. I don't remember. But when I just seen how everybody was on the line cooking, putting out food, I wanted to put food on the plate and not just take up dirty plates off the table. So, you know, that was my very first, very first job. And after that, I just wanted to cook. Well, that's nice. Before we go any further, uh, Maggie Jenkins wants to know, where in South Carolina are you located? Uh, we right here in Beaufort, South Carolina, but we are trying to expand and do more traveling. We've uh, served food in Savannah, Georgia. We plan on hitting Columbia, Charleston. We, we plan on doing a lot of stuff, but we're based right here in Beaufort, South Carolina. Beautiful Beaufort, 843. <laughs> so your business, do you... You do you deliver or is it a pickup service? Exactly. What type of service is it? Well, we well right now we we specialize in seafood. You know, where we at, you know, it's a coastal town. We specialize in seafood. And it was a pickup service. That's how it started. You know, I came across a young man and a young lady that, you know, that did DoorDash and they helped me do it to uh, you know, set up a delivery structure. But for the most part, everybody just comes and picks up their food. Okay. So, so Chris, people are interested in already. So, Maggie says she's in Sumter and she needs your info. Is that far from you? Uh, Sumter is a good drive, but, you know, <laughs> listen, if, we, if somebody call and book us, we on the way. <laughs> we on the way. I was, I was just talking to this young lady on Facebook. She was in Atlanta. And she said, oh, this is for tomorrow. I said, well, let's talk. We can, we can hop on the flight tonight, you know? Really? Man, look, you got you to gotta be able to go out and get it. It ain't going to come to you. So you say that you you specialize in seafood. Is it well, fresh seafood? I mean. Right now, right now, being that where I, where I learned how to cook on Hilton Head and in this area, it's it has so many seafood restaurants. So you got to learn how to cook seafood. Like I can cook the almost anything, you know, I was blessed to work in the Western, the Omni, South Carolina Yacht Club, you know, along with Parasala working with Sodexo. So, you know, I've learned to cook food outside of my culture as well. Okay. So I've been on your Facebook page. I've been nosing around doing my research. So I noticed that you've also done some cooking with different resorts. What was the experience with that? Oh man, listen, it's 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 an experience because you know, when I went to the most recent resort um at the Westin, it was right after I left Paris Island. 
And it was a big difference because we went from industrial cooking to where we feed in anywhere from 22 to 4,000 recruits per meal what? to having to cook a plate of food, all the ingredients right there, a la carte style. So working at the Westin, it was a very, how should I say, teachable experience. I've learned so much there, you know, with the mother sauces and just how to compose a dish. One of the executive sous chefs that he he always always told me, refine, elevate, refine, elevate, and I forgot the other one, but it's in there. It's in there. <laughs> so let's let's just go back a little bit. I think you said that you were working. Correct me if I'm wrong. So you were you were working in the restaurants and you were scraping the plates and things of that nature, right? And yeah, when I was a busboy. So you didn't want to do that anymore. So nah. Have have you always been in South Carolina? No, 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 no. I was born and raised. I was born in Brooklyn, raised in the Bronx. Oh. You know, so so you know, NY all day. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yes, born in Brooklyn, raised in the Bronx, and I want to say early two thousand is when my mother made the move down here. So. Okay. So your mom taught you how to cook. <laughs> my mom, my mother was a. Uh, was a single parent of four kids and she made sure I knew how to cook. So I was always in the kitchen with her since I was eye level with the stove. Wow. So do you um, have, do you use a cookbook, your own special recipes or do you like, you do like I do, you like just sprinkle a little bit and see if it works? Well, you know, with a lot of, a lot of stuff, you know, I try to go and research, you know, the recipe, and just get like the basis of what I'm gonna do with it. But if I ever use a recipe out of a book, I always find a way to add that Chef Chin flavor to it. And what is that Chef Chin uh, flavor? If you don't mind me asking. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? It's, it's a lot of different things. Cause you know, they say, oh, you gotta find that one dish that defines you. But I feel like just because I was blessed in, to work some so many places. I'm very versatile. So mm, that Chef Chin flavor will just always be a good depth of flavor. You know, you will never get bland food <laughs> over here. Never. We do, we, I don't, listen, I don't like salt, but I know how to season food. Okay. Uh, Helena, yes, he's in South Carolina. So let me ask you this question right here, um, because I've seen I, I, I've seen your food. I mean, it looks delicious, you know. And presentation and, is key. Well, see, you're right because I mean, presentation and taste. That's the that's the most important thing. But um, do you think that it it would ever be where you would be able to make this food, say, put it on that dry ice and ship it out like to, from, from to different states? Well, I, I don't want to give away too much, but, um, you know, I've been on, you know, usually I, I cook all week long. Okay. But this past week, you know, I haven't been able to really cook the way I, I usually do because I have things like that I'm trying to figure out. Okay. I mean, listen, you got to do what you got to do. So, so all your cooking that, that, that you're doing, you're doing it from home. Yes, but in that, and I, <laughs> I, I honestly hope I sold the last plate of food out of my home last night. Wow, bless you! Whoa, whoa, don't clap yet. The dominoes haven't fell yet, and the ink isn't dry. You got to it. You right, you right, you right. But I know anything that can go wrong, can go wrong, will go wrong. So I just, I just try to stay positive, stay focused, and keep moving. Helena wants to know. Helena wants to know if you're thinking about a franchise. At some point, of at some point, you know, for what, for what I want to do and the lifestyle I want to create for me, my kids, my family. Of course, I would want a franchise, but right now I want to. I, I need to make sure that I lay a perfect foundation. So if someone does franchise, then there's no room. 
that you know there's always room for a human a human error. Yeah. But I want to make sure that if there's any in, if there's any error is due to incompetence and not being properly trained or set up. That makes sense. Um, Maggie says, "Is COVID nineteen taking a toll on your business?" <sighs> Sadly, COVID nineteen is the reason I have a business. Do tell. Um, you know, in in my area, in the Hilton Head area, with you know people that are very experienced, it's not hard to get a good hourly rate. Right. You know, so I, I can't speak for other states because I know in New York minimum wage up there is like thirteen fifty. I think it but, went up, but well, you ain't got to act like that. Down here in South Carolina, still seven twenty five, man. Seven twenty five. Yes, ma'am. Jeez. Yeah, but they say, okay. oh, that's because the cost of living up there is, is higher and all this and that. But Listen, you from you from Brooklyn and the Bronx, so you already know what the cost of living is up here. I know, cause a studio apartment up there run you like three grand a month, depending on what block is on. <laughs> well, you correct? You what? You definitely yeah. correct. You know, but um, but back to your question. You know, I was I was making good hourly wages, you know, but when COVID hit, everything went downhill for the restaurant industry in this area and I believe all over the country. So I had took a job right here in Beaufort at a local breakfast place. And, you know, I just first of all, I knew I was being underpaid, but some income is better than no income. True. You know, so I knew I was being underpaid. But when I started realizing I was being undervalued I, and spoken to in a way like I don't know what I'm doing. And I said, you know what? I can get up at six in the morning and cook to empower myself instead of helping empower someone else that looks true. down on me. True, 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 true. So one day I woke up and I was in the bathroom. My wife came. She said, hey, uh, so you're not going to work? <laughs> and I said, uh, nah, man, I, I think I'm just going to start cooking for myself and see where it goes. And whew, Lord, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a battle. It's been an uphill climb, but I'm proud of the business that we have built thus far. Well, you have a, a couple of questions. James Robinson <laughs> said, um, are you looking to do a food truck? That is one of the main short-term goals um right now you know me and my wife you know we trying to talk with this guy and if we could get this location and a partnership done then the food truck will be a part of reality by march of oh, next year like i said claim it that's one thing i don't know if, if you're familiar with with with, with the secret the secret says anything that you want, you claim it, and then you act as though you have it because what you throw out to the universe is what you get back to yourself. So if you feel that this is what I want, I'm going to have it, there's no room for doubt because that little bit of doubt can cause you just to mess up everything. So you have to say, I have it. I'm going to get that full car. Everything that you want. You have to live it as though you already have it. Um, Errol McDuffie says, have you ever thought about opening up a local restaurant? Hold on. What was his name again? His name is er Earl McDuffie. Earl McDuffie, a light-skinned guy with a bull head? <laughs> I don't know what his hair looked like, but yeah. All right. But what, else? <laughs> what, did, what, did, what did the black Irish man say? He said, have you ever thought about opening up a local restaurant? Well, anybody that has known me 10, 12 years ago would tell you that Talia's was my dream at first, you know, and Talia's was, uh, is a place that I'm going to bring to fruition, but it's a local restaurant that I want to be a staple in the community. And the name Talia comes from, you know, my firstborn son and daughter name put together and I want it to be like a lounge place where a family can come and relax, get good food, 
you know, at well priced. Because you know, you go some places, the food be expensive, and then you look at the plate. Yeah, like, did you, did you drop some food on the way here? Like, where the rest of it at? So, you, but you one hundred percent right with that because I've gone to restaurants and the bill is like crazy big, but the food is like, if this a man, good listen, deal or what? Listen, listen, I've worked at one. They was ranked what number seven on Travelocity at, at for the kitchen when I worked there, and the the food was priced anywhere from twenty four dollars on the low end to fifty sixty dollars on the high end. And I remember putting some of this food on the plate, and I'm like, "Yo, that's what we giving them." And he was like, "Oh, well, this is fine dining, so we're not trying to fool them; we're trying to feed them." And I, I'm like. I, I could tell you exactly what I thought in that moment, but it wouldn't be politically correct. <laughs> um, Jaquette Robinson says manifestation, and you're 100% right. A lot of times what happened with people is they don't believe in themselves. You have to believe in yourself. This is why I say if this is what you want, you believe in it and you live like this is what I have. Well, you know what? This is what I want. You know, I want to go to this meeting tomorrow and set it up to where me and my wife have a partnership with this man and we serve the food to the whole gated community. Well, how about how about me and my wife? We're going to go to this meeting tomorrow and we're going to sign this con this partnership and we're going to sell food to the entire community. See, I like the way you move. I'm going to have to figure out that dry ice soon and send you a plate. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I've i seen it, and I'm like, wow, this food looks really good. Earl said that he would support that. So, I mean, I think that what, what happens with a lot of businesses is that people have big dreams and little pockets. Not saying that's you, but people have big dreams and little pockets. Man, listen. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you for a long time, talking about big dreams and little pockets. It's not about the pockets. It's not about the pockets because you can have a little dream and all the money in the world. But if you ain't got that work ethic, that determination, that perseverance, it doesn't matter about anything else. Well, you're right. You know, you can hear you see all these, you know, rags, the richest story. Oh, I came to this country with $17 and a half a pickaxe and. Now I got the biggest construction company in North America, you know, so it's all up to me. It's all about work ethic. You know, if you would have told if, if you would have told me. Five years ago that I would be at this point in my life doing what I'm doing, I would have probably looked at you, said my light is dead, pass me another lighter and just kept it going. Like, I'm not even going to pay that no attention. Well, at least, at least you admit to it. Helena said. I will pray about that, and it is done in Jesus' name. So I mean, Amen. Amen. People, people are like, you know, believing in you. You know what I'm saying? And hey, James, you know. Robert, James Robinson said, "Networking is the key with people with money. You have to network. That's the most important thing, right?" Here. Man, let me tell you. And the only reason I say this is because, again, to me, is the money is a part of it, but like she said, networking is the key. Uh, perseverance, determination, yeah. work yeah. ethic. You know, you can get the money later to help do it all that. But if you, if people that do have the money don't view you as someone that's going to work hard, someone that they could invest their money in and sleep good at night, knowing they just gave you $50,000, then everything else don't matter. Well, Maggie, Maggie Jenkins, she she's in South Carolina. And she says, I need a, a low country ball right about now. Well, our low country ball right here comes with a, a pound and a half of blue crab, half a pound of shrimp, a big succulent neck bone, corn, <laughs> egg, and potato for $25. And we make sure that box is heavy. It sounds like it's heavy. I mean, I, I, I've seen a lot of a lot of the, the, the pictures that's been posted. I'm like, God, this is a lot of food right here. And in this day and time, with the amount of food that, that's on that plate, $25 is not a lot. I mean, See, I'm going to just keep it real. Me, me personally, like I said, I worked in restaurants for a long time. So when I put together a plate, when I work somewhere, and I know this plate is twenty nine ninety five, 
And I'm like, oh, so, you know, when people ask me, do my pasta serve two people? I'd be like, of course, maybe three, depending on your appetite. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, when somebody comes to get a large pasta from me, I want to at least say, you know, well, maybe this this single mom and her kids could share it, you know, because at the end of the day, you have to be thinking not just about yourself. You also have to be thinking about the community that's buying your food, because if you want repeat customers. Well, you know what? You 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 just said a mouthful just then because the money will come, but you got to get the people in first. So if you're good to your customers and you do right by them, they are going to refer. They, they're going to they're going to send you referrals. They're going to tell more people about you and then the money will come. But as far as setting is setting your um, your price for your food. How do you go about setting the price? <sighs> All right, so I just use basic, basic, you know, tools that I've used, I've learned in the restaurant. You know, I look at how much I paid for everything. You know, I before I set a price, I make the food so I can look at it and look at it visually. Yeah. And be like, oh, I was going to sell that at ten dollars, but it looked good, so I I know I can squeeze twelve. Yeah. You know, but I just I, I make sure everything is reasonably priced. You know, I don't want nothing for somebody to be like, oh, well, I paid $18 for this and it wasn't worth it. You know, a lot of a lot of my supporters always say that, you know, it was worth every dollar, you know, and I, and I take that as a badge of honor. Well, that's the most important thing right there. Um, I mean, listen, word of mouth is the best thing. It's, it's, it's the best thing. If you have people that's actually eating the food and they can tell you about it and get reviews about it. That's the best thing that people can do. It's you know, as, as you're right. You're you right. Go ahead. No, I don't even, I, I, with this amount of love and support that we have received just here in Beaufort, mm -hmm. you know, one day I said to my wife, I said, dang, Laquan, do you notice we don't even post our food no more? You know, the customers do it for us, you know? And the best thing, of like with me, I make sure my food, when you order food for me, it look just like that picture. Cause oh, you know, so. you get you all you see some food on TV, then you get there, you be like, uh. yeah, a lot. You be like, this don't look like the picture. So let's name some of the things that's that's on your menu. What 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 type of things? I know you said seafood, but seafood it it, it encompasses a lot of different parts. So let's talk about this menu. Well, we do mostly blue crabs, fresh shrimp. Uh, well, of course, fresh blue crabs, shrimp, uh, garlic shrimp, garlic crab, seafood pastas, um, crab rice, shrimp rice. And if I'm in Walmart one day or Sam's and I see something, I'm like, hmm, you know, I, I, I try not to limit myself, but I also try to give the people what they want. So recently, well, what we've been doing lately has just been, how should I say? Blue crab, I mean, garlic crab, garlic shrimp, seafood pasta, shrimp and grits, shrimp and rice. Uh, we started doing fried shrimp. Just yesterday, uh, I did a chicken sandwich because I wanted a Popeye's chicken sandwich so bad. But I said, you know what? I, I make one myself. It's, it's pretty good, but I made one myself with mayonnaise, with mayonnaise and just pickles, and it was good, and... You know, I, I sold one, I sold two to this to the supporter, and he called me the next day and said, "Man, that sandwich was so big, I my wife couldn't finish it all." I said, "Yep, that's a good problem." <laughs> so, uh, you gonna add that to the menu? Uh, eventually, eventually. Right now, like you said, it's all about manifestation. So, it's going to be on the next menu at the next location. And this next location will be soon, right? I mean, it's going to be a physical building? Yes, ma'am. A physical building. Uh, it's going to be uh, at on one of these sea islands out here in Beaufort on Cat Island. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. I try not to think about it too hard because sometimes... I think about it. <laughs> I know, but not right now with you because sometimes I... I, I I still remember where I came from and where I, where I was at five, six, seven years ago, and it's still unbelievable. Like, baby, we made it, you know. So it's, it's it's just it's just it's just a joyful moment every day. 
Well, is is it too personal to ask you where were you five or six years ago? I was a drug addict, man. Like, you know, I'm talking about, and I ain't just talking about no casual user. I'm talking about blow your whole paycheck user. And, you know, it got to the point where, you know, my sister disowned me, my nephews, and everybody just basically washed their hands with me. So, but, you know, to look at where I was then and where I'm at now, it's like hard work, determination, and perseverance to take you anywhere. So you are a testimony, a walking testimony. <sighs> yeah. I would say so. Yeah, I mean, to... My eyes is just getting like just watery, but like to go back for, for five to six years ago to what you were doing and to see you now about to go in and put that key in and have your own business, yo, that's a blessing in itself. You um, know, is and you know I'm gonna try to, I, you know, just because you said as a testimony, you know, I just want to bring this one little thing up. April tenth, two thousand thirteen, was another day that everything could have changed for me. Uh, you know, that's the day that I almost died, you know, and still to this day, I remember it like yesterday, seeing the light, hearing the voice and. You was you almost know. on the other side. <sighs> I seen the light, you know, I, and it says not your time. You still got a lot to do. And wow. next thing I know, I remember the doctor with the, Oh, Miss Chin, do you know where you at? You've been in accidents. Anybody you can call, and you know, and that was that. James Robinson said, "That's the past, and we look to the future, brother." All day, all day, but you sometimes, sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you gotta think about your past and remember your past to to, to give you more motivation and focus on where you're going. Because a lot of our people, we get to a certain level where we forget where we came from. Yeah. And it makes it very easy for you to make certain mistakes and go back to where you came from. Wow. Helena says, praise God. God can use anybody. Um, see how everybody just supporting you. Earl is saying that he's proud of you. And Coach Hara Rivers said, hard work pays off. Keep heading for the East. That's what you got to do. Because let me tell you something. If you don't learn my brother, from my brother. Huh? I was talking to Coach Harold, but continue. If you don't learn from your mistakes, you will repeat them. I mean, listen, like I said, you are walking testimony because what happened and where you are now, a lot of people, they don't make it out of that situation. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, when they get there, they see that light. They continue walking right into that light. Um, Jaquetta said, what is the earliest we can put in an order and the latest time we can pick up? Well, see, you know, before, you know, we would try to cook all day, every day. And then it went to five o'clock to, you know, maybe 10, 11 or until the food ran out, you know. <laughs> so, but right now, but right now, you know, we take in a scheduled break because for one, we have a wedding that we're doing for a young lady here in Beaufort. Her and her fiance have decided to get married. Congratulations to them. Congratulations. So, and I was brought in, you know, very short term notice. So it's hard for me to, you know, procure everything I need for her wedding and also do what I need to do on my side. So the decision was made that we just want to stop what we're doing, focus on her wedding. And then other opportunities started coming in after that. So it's it's a lot going on. Wait, when is the wedding? November 1st, Sunday on Cat Island. Oh, that, that's not bad. That's not far. But you, you are keeping people informed to let them know, listen, don't go nowhere because I'm coming right back, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, I made a post like earlier this week because, you know, I was, um, even though I'm not cooking right now, I still try to share other people in Buford, you know, that sell food and, oh, yes, you know, sir. you know, like this young lady here at Buford K Slay, you know, she has an amazing breakfast. So, you know, I tried to post her stuff. Uh, another young lady 
out in Bluffton, South Carolina, Samantha. I don't want to say the wrong, the wrong last name, so Lord forgive me. Uh, I don't want to say the wrong last name, but her name is Samantha, and she does a honey wings. So I just I try to keep you know people interested, even if they can't come with you know support me, they can go support someone else. That's that know. networking. That's that networking. And Coach Rivers says, never look back. If God wanted us to look back, He would have put eyes in the back of our head. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I totally understand. I totally understand because what he's what he's coming from, because my um my son's aunt says the same thing. But my for me, I look at it differently. The only reason I don't look back and I don't get caught up in the moment of looking back, but I just try to always remind myself where I came from, where I started, so I don't make any mistakes that force me to backslide you know well because because if you don't know where you came from then you won't know where you're going exactly preach to him so listen so my half an hour is up and you you've been very informative for, for coming through giving us this information i hope things work out for you and which i know things are going to work out for the both of you but before we close is it anything that you want to say to anybody else out there that's thinking about starting a business or just, you know, just want to take control of their life? Is it anything that you want to say to them? Stop being scared. You know, fear, fear. Well, okay. If you have ideas or you want to start a business, stop listening to other people. <laughs> what you need to do that's best for you. When somebody tells you you can't do that or you shouldn't do that, it's probably, it's not you. It's the fear that they have in themselves that they're pushing onto you. So if you listen to them, you'll make them right. I'm not trying to tell you build enemies. I mean, you know, burn bridges and everything, but you always have to do what's right for you because what happened for them and went wrong for them might not happen to you. You know, it's all about timing. It's all about a lot of things come into place. But I would just say, don't be scared. Believe in yourself and trust your own decisions. So do you want to drop one recipe before you out? All right. So, so, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do one little recipe, right? Right. And this is what it is. This is what it is, right? Determination and perseverance equals success. Ah! I'm sorry, man. I, I am too early. I am too early in my career to give out any food recipes, but I will be having a recipe book available next year. But I, it's just too early for me to give out any recipes. But I will tell y'all this. The Alfredo sauce is made with white cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar cheese, and two more other cheeses. I'm sorry. I couldn't do it. I was about to, but. Wait, you, you make your own Alfredo sauce? Why? Yes. I don't buy. Let me tell you something. I work so many places. I've been taught how to make a lot of things from scratch. So, you know, my Alfredo sauce is made from four different cheeses. You know, I use heavy whipping cream. I use fresh garlic, fresh herbs. Y'all write it down. I go ahead and shred the cheese. You know, and I make sure the water, I mean, the milk is to a certain temperature. So when I drop the cheese in there, it immediately melts and just doesn't get lumpy. Okay. You know, so then I thicken it up and I'm good to go. You know, I don't, mm -mm. I make I make my own tartar sauce. I make my own yum yum sauce. I make, I try, I try to make everything handcrafted. I'm not playing. I'm not about to buy something out of a bottle and sell it to you. No. So Chris, if somebody wants to get in contact with you, how do they reach you? Well, you can reach me through Facebook, of course, Christopher Chin, Chef Chin, or you can call me at 843-941-1946, or you can email me at AmazingCateringBuford at gmail.com. We also have an Instagram page, Chef Chin Flavors. So I don't really do much with this Instagram page, but I, I will soon, but... Yeah, man, we should trying to be out. And we also have a business page on Facebook called Amazing Catering. And you can always inbox me and 
I, I try to be like Radio Shack. You got questions, we got answers. <laughs> Chris, thank you so very much for coming on and sharing your story. Because like I said at the beginning, everybody keeps saying, let's support our own. But how many people do you know like us that actually have our own business? You know what I'm saying? So thank you for coming on. And everybody who came in to watch this right to, to watch this show, I hope that my viewers that are in South Carolina, hope you guys, I just have to post these, these crabs here so you guys can see what they look like. <laughs> yeah, we keep them by the bushel. We keep them by the bushel. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a crab person, but I just want you guys to see exactly what it is, to see what the food look like. Even if you're in North Carolina also, you know, if you happen to cross that line, you go over there and check them out. Chris, thank you so very much for coming on and sharing. So now, now you guys, if you guys didn't know of any black-owned businesses in South Carolina, now you know. Because like I said, it's showtime. And with showtime, we put it all out there and let it all be known. Okay? Until next week, you guys, take care. Chris, I'm going to have to come to South Carolina so I can check that out. And just as soon as this little nasty COVID-19 leaves, you're going to have to host the Joiner Family Reunion because, yo, I've been checking it out. And it looks really good. Okay. All right. Just, 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 just give me enough time to get it set up. I'll let you know a year in advance. It ain't no big deal. I'll tell right. you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Chris. Thank you all. Take care. Good night.